Now, a Jimmy Mathis exclusive, The Stone Zone, featuring Roger Stone, veteran of 30 years in politics and nine presidential campaigns, including Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, and Donald Trump. Here is Jimmy Mathis on WBAL News Radio 1090 and the WBAL app. The suspects were wearing what looked like explosive vests, but these were later established to be hoaxes. I just saw the, the police escorting people coming out from, from that area with their hands, uh, with your hands on your head. W why was that? To be honest, I don't know if anyone actually told us to do that, but everyone, everyone else was doing it, so we just kind of started doing it as well. We just saw like three guys come into the restaurant with, one of them had a big red knife, I guess, and they came in, they walked around the restaurant. I guess they kind of just stabbed anyone that they saw and knocked on the ground and then we just hit welcome back to the jimmy mattis show roger stone joins us for the stone zone you can hear the stone zone every sunday here on the jimmy mattis show also jack posobic independent journalist live in studio good morning roger how you doing good morning gentlemen so obviously the big story uh seven dead more than 40 injured after the terrorist attack in london 10 p.m local time last night uh jack and i were just talking about Donald Trump using uh, going to Twitter last night, using it as sort of um, an, an example and a reason on why we need to move forward on his travel ban. I guess my, my question to you, a conversation we've been having earlier today, um, I don't believe it was, but do, do, is, Trump's getting a little bit of criticism for maybe being a little, uh, a little too quick to the draw on um, tweeting that out about the travel ban. Do you think so? No, I really don't. I actually think that that as we have seen from the beginning, events. Um, have an extraordinary effect on the president, uh, and any terrorist attacks, whether they're today, tomorrow, or next week, really strengthen his hand in terms of his arguments about the need to seal the borders and, and to um, put in place an immigration system, which does a more aggressive background check on those who would like to come here. And here uh, that's, that's not bigoted. That's not racist. That's just common sense. Well, it is common sense, Roger. And the problem is this isn't the, the attacks that we saw in London yesterday. This is not some black swan moment. It's becoming a regular occurrence. We saw it in Paris and London last night, Orlando, San Bernardino. There, I mean, there's material evidence that's all over the place when these countries in Europe refuse to to have any sort of border security. I mean, it, this is not rocket science. So I don't look at Donald Trump as politicizing it. It's something that happened, and it's it's an example that we're seeing over and over and over and a result of not having any kind of enforceable borders. Man, you would think after Orlando, after, after San Bernardino, after 9-11, Americans would get over the it can't happen here mentality because it will happen here. Uh, and one does not have to be a genius to see the trend uh, look at these videos in Germany and France, Belgium of swarms of young, you know, Islamic men raping, pillaging, destroying public property, burning things, assaulting people, uh, and realize that that wave is headed this way unless we follow the president's prescription. Talking to Roger Stone, former Donald Trump top advisor, author of many, many books. What you, uh, your new book, Roger, that you were signing out at Bren Circuses? Uh, the Making of the President 2016, the insider's view on how Donald Trump pulled off the greatest political upset in American history. This is very inside stuff. This is not just a, your dry uh, you know, analysis of the state-by-state -state numbers, but it's the why, the how and the why of the 2016 election. And it is a great uh, read. Strongly, re strongly, re strongly recommend it. I do, too. It's a great read. I'm halfway through it. Uh, shifting to other news, big week in Washington, D.C., James Comey testifying on Capitol Hill. On Thursday, all eyes on that. There were some rumblings about the president possibly using executive privilege to squash that testimony. It looks like the former FBI director will testify. Anything come out of that testimony, you think, Roger? Yes. I mean, look, it is now clear, according to the New York Times, that Mr. Comey became uh, convinced that there was an obstruction of justice above him. And instead of reporting it, he acted to further the obstruction. That should be, to me, should be the central focus uh, of the hearing. He wants to talk about memos. Let's talk about the memo that, that alleged that Loretta Lynch had fixed the case with the Clinton campaign. Now, it turns out that the FBI has determined that that memo was a counterfeit. But Mr. Comey didn't think so. Mr. Comey thought it was real, and therefore he acted in a criminal way, not consistent with his duties as an officer of the court. There's really nothing else to talk about. 
a memo you wrote about Donald Trump. Sorry, Mr. Comey. What about this memo? Right. This memo that shows that you abandoned the obstruction. Uh, this is going to be, I think, two competing narratives. And, and I really think the White House needs to say over and over again, if he does produce memos that seem to uh, imply that the president attempted to uh, obstruct justice in the cases, why would we believe anything the man says? Sure. Mr. Comey, how much were you paid by HSBC? How much did they pay you after you ensured that no executive there would go to prison after getting caught money laundering hundreds of millions of dollars? I mean, this guy is not exactly Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm. (laughs) Roger, also, last week, uh, what I thought was a very significant story that got very little reporting, Nunes serving subpoenas to the CIA, CIA, FBI, NSA, over the unmasking request by the Obama administration, officials including former National Security Advisor Susan Rice, CIA Director John Brennan, and the United Nations Ambassador Samantha Power. The first two, first of all, the fact that these subpoenas were delivered and there was unmasking, if we're talking about the hacking of an election, let's look at the unmasking and the abuse of power from the Obama administration. CIA Director and National Security Advisor Susan Rice, those subpoenas didn't surprise me. The fact that they went to the United Nations Ambassador, Samantha Power, that one I found interesting. She's a diplomat. I mean, really, she shouldn't even be in this conversation. I thought that was pretty significant. Well, what does Chairman Nunes know that we don't know? First of all, while he may have recused himself specifically on the Russia probe, he hasn't recused himself on the question of whether the Democrats used um, secret surveillance information to cheat in order to win the election. You see, there are crimes here, unlike Russia, where no crime has yet been proven. The simple unmasking by Susan Susan Rice is indisputably a crime, indisputable. She's indictable tomorrow. Uh, And therefore, uh, yes, I'd like to know what Brennan and Rogers and Clapper and all these other fellows uh, know about the illegal leaking uh, against the Trump administration. And, Time uh, to get them in front of a grand jury, never mind the Congress, in front of a grand jury, and to let the Justice Department do its job. Jack Posobiec. Roger, one question I had is, you know, we saw the New York Post putting out there that uh, there was some talk that H.R. McMaster, the National Security Advisor, may be in contact with a former uh, military official, who also a member of the international, um, or the of the intel community, and we're also seeing that uh, a lot of people are suggesting that may actually be David Petraeus. David Petraeus, of course, has a lot of ties to John Brennan. Do you think that that could be tied into all of this? I, I think Petraeus has been a quiet guiding force for McMaster's, for Mattis, uh, to a certain extent for Pompeo at the CIA. And that's not good in my view. Mr. McMaster this week, uh, it was revealed, hired a former Soros uh, associate named Fiona Hill. She's the White House's, or I should say the NSC's new expert on Russian affairs. She worked for the Open Society Institute of George Soros. Uh, she went to Harvard. She belongs to the Council on Foreign Relations. Um, she has been attempting to shut down the U.S.'s effort to back Hungarians and their efforts to shut this terror group down. So um, you kind of uh, you wonder how such a person would get into the Trump White House. Roger Stone, always a pleasure. I want to thank you for, um, I know it was a lot of effort on your part to travel out here to Baltimore last week. A lot of positive feedback from your visit. It was great. People got a chance to come out to Brennan Circuses, a chance to meet you. And, uh, I, you know, I appreciate you, you coming out here. I know it took some work on your part. And then the dinner afterwards, a lot of friends of the show over at Pappas's. Those, those crab cakes, Roger. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I never had crab yeah, cakes no, before. I, no, I was going to say the crab cakes alone were worth uh, the trip to Baltimore. <laughs> and These were the great, the greatest crab cakes um, that I've ever seen. And people are still, as I move around, people are still saying to me, "Get me Jackie Beal." <laughs> now, here's here's the funny thing on the crab cake. So when Roger very first started doing the Stone Zone, which by the way we've been doing this a while now, Roger, I said, I said you commit to me weekly, okay? I'll ship you some Baltimore crab cakes. So we sent them from from Pappas's. and then uh, once we had you here, I was like, we got to go out and get dinner and bring all the friends along. So it was actually your your second serving of the Baltimore crab cakes out there. So good time. Well, in the first serving, um, I was out of town, and Mrs. Stone says they were delicious. <laughs> <laughs> you need to ship uh, crab so cakes, I, by the way, Pappas is the way to do it. So, All right. All right, Roger, thank you thank you very much. Can't wait to talk to you next week. It's going to be a busy week in Washington, D.C. Roger Stone for the Stone Zone every Sunday here at 930. Thank you, Roger. Quick break, 946. You're listening to the Jimmy Mathis Show on WBL News Radio 1090.